there are nine elders present. Uh, ten. Marcus is coming. Um, would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? All right, uh, we'll move on to public forum. We have one person for public forum. Uh, John Dolson, you want to come up? Thank you. My name is John Dolson. I live at 409 New York Avenue. Um, moved here in 95 and lived at 324 Wisconsin Avenue. And liked the area so much, I was renting at the time, so we bought in the Ellis District, and we've noticed the problem of animals getting into garbage since the week we moved here. Um, and I think it's more prevalent along the lakefront with the seagulls, um, and garbage is strewn about. I've shared pictures to uh, Mary Lynn and the mayor and others throughout the years, and the, you can see it yourself when you drive around. One of the problems is that in this area, there are a lot of tenants. Um, and if the garbage is picked through by animals, the next day, the renters aren't cleaning up the curb. Um, if you own in this area, obviously the next day or two after garbage day, and if your garbage is picked through, you go through and clean up the mess. And sometimes it's it's a huge mess. Raccoons get in there. If you're a shift worker and you're putting your garbage out the day prior, you can do it after 5 o'clock the day prior. Unfortunately, a lot of them don't abide by that, and they put it out 3 or 4 in the afternoon at a couple hours. But through the night, raccoons get it, birds get at it, cats, dogs, whatever. Um, these are long overdue. Our neighboring communities have these garbage canisters. Uh, if we want tourism to grow in this area, obviously with our South Pier and the marina, we want tourists. Um, but if there's garbage always blowing around the streets and you're gonna see more of it now, all the snow melted and there's, gonna, there's still garbage uh, in the, the grass between the sidewalk and the curb, the street sweeper can't get up there. Um, a lot of people haven't gotten out and started raking their lawns yet. But the, that bulk of that garbage comes from our lack of canisters on garbage day. So that's all I have, and I hope you vote to instill these. There's going to be cost with that, but we can absorb it either as we, we absorb it when you redo our sidewalks in front of our homes or curb and gutter, build it into our tax bill, whatever, but it's, uh, it's more it's a fee or whatever you would term it that I'm in favor of because it's going to make Sheboygan better. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any other members from the public wishing to speak? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to 2.1 approval from the minutes from January 14th, 2019 meeting. There's been a motion by Alder Wolf to approve and a second. Any discussion on the minutes from our last meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye to approve our minutes. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, well, we'll jump into items for discussion, um, and we'll turn it over to the gentleman from Public Works. Well, thank you, Chairman. Uh, David Beeble, Director of Public Works with the City of Sheboygan, and I have with me this evening Jason Blasiola, our Street Superintendent, uh, Streets and Sanitation Superintendent, and we're going to give you a presentation of kind of where we've come from in the past with our garbage program, some of the challenges that we have, and what we're proposing to move forward for the future. So with that, I'm going to let Jason kind of lead the discussion, and uh, we're going to tag team it tonight and 
Uh, I think the chairman asked if, you know, during the presentation, if you have a question, just raise your hand so then we can answer it during the presentation, not that we have to go back after later and, and uh, backtrack, in other words, if that's all right. Thank you. Good evening. Again, my name is Jason um, with Streets and Sanitation. So we've been cleaning out our, we've been cleaning out our offices and I found a, uh, a brochure that we had from probably the 1950s when we changed to single can for burnable refuse and non-burnable refuse. So we've been going through changes in sanitation collection for quite some time. So this is just the, the latest and the newest. Um, so our current trucks are at the end of their life and we're going to need to replace these trucks. Uh, regardless if we move to an automated collection system or if we continue collecting manually. Um, manual collection, we're one of um, two people, one of two communities that are still collecting recyclables and bagged. All the other communities within the state are using a cart to pick up the recycling. Um, so we're looking to convert to an automated cart base for the residential curbside collection. And most important to me, it improves the worker safety. We'll talk a little bit about the, a lot about the worker safety and the job satisfaction and the convenience for the residents along with the aesthetics. So we have a director Beeble, and we have Don and Melissa and Heather at the front. They take the phone calls. We averaged in January and February about 500 calls uh, each month with questions on garbage collection. Myself, David Groves is the streets and sanitation supervisor. He sets the schedule. Uh, a lot of the calls that come in, he gets handled. And Bruce Ma uh, Matstorf is the sanitation lead man. He's the one that actually goes out and deals with, this, deals with problems that arise and deals with the constituents with any problems. So we collect about 11,000 tons of garbage and about 3,500 tons of recycling yearly. So our material recovery rate is about 24%. So we're um, diverting 24% from the landfill. That's an underperforming uh, number. Uh, when communities move to cart base, they can see a, between a 10 and 30% increase in those recyclable numbers. This was a picture one of our um, sanitation workers took. Uh, we've had a couple of people stuck with needles. Um, this is just one of the things they come across with. Um, unfortunately, in the community, we're coming across more and more sharps um, and that are not being disposed properly. So the work so workers' compensation claims, uh, they lead the lost time, uh, backs, uh, slip, trips, falls, sprained ankles, getting in and out of the trucks, and then being exposed to these sharps and communal diseases with the current way that we're collecting garbage. So why automated? They have some advantages to move to an automated. Um, us in the city of Kenosha are the only two that are bagging our garbages right now. So when we do manually collect, we're in and out of the truck, we're walking in the snow and the ice, we're dealing with um, the um, snow piles and we're getting down and picking up the garbage and the recycling as we go. So this is just an example. I know a lot of people the garbage is there when you put it out in the morning and the garbage is gone when you get home. So you might not have a realistic idea of how, how we are collecting the garbage. Um, yeah. This guy was a great recycler. Was one of our... <laughs> one bag of garbage, six bags of, uh, of bottles. Um, that's, but, an out, that's an outlier. <laughs> So we're dealing with alleys that aren't plowed, so we have trip, trips and falls. We're getting on and off the back of the truck. Lots of times the bags are overstuffed. They break open when we pick them up. Um, sometimes the animals get into them as they were eluding. Um, so this one right here, it was overstuffed. He's picking it up. Now he's picking up the garbage by hand. And this is how you get stuck with a sharp.
Right now we do not have a limit on the number of bags that you put out. So as you see, there's a lot more garbage than there is recycling. Uh, when you move to a cart-based system, you have a limited amount of real estate. So it forces you to move into a recycling because you're going to need to recycle to keep your garbage in your bag space. Um, I'll try going on to the next one. I think we have the idea here. So this is Calumet. This is another safety hazard, or not Calumet, Fort South, it's 14th at this, at this point. So we're collecting on a busy street. Um, I'm waiting for the cars to go by. Currently, our ordinances call for us to shovel out a pile so we don't have to climb. Um, this is one of our workers, John Burkhart. He came today. He came to the last meeting also. Um, so you see the kind of stuff that we're dealing with, climbing up and down the banks and the cars going by you. So it really does put our employees at risk collecting garbage manually. Another... Well, they should have been shoveling out all summer or all winter and keeping a spot. Uh, there could be other areas they can collect on this end, but technically we're not supposed to, our employees aren't supposed to be climbing up the snow banks. What's that in the dri driveway? So the material, Wisconsin material recovery facilities are banning bags. Um, so I went down to waste management. They have our current contract. The way the recycling works is they dump it onto a floor and they load it into a conveyor belt. And everything that comes from the city of Sheboygan and the city of Kenosha has to manually be ripped open. Um, a lot of our recyclables are not being recycled because these workers, it's going on the conveyor belt really fast. They're giving it one rip and they're shaking it out in the conveyor belt and there's a shaft that goes down into a dumpster and they're dumping out the recyclables and they're throwing the bags down. If the bags get missed in this spot, they get into the different sorting systems and those bags get tangled up and the machine stops and um, it slows down their production and it's dangerous. They have to lock everything out, sometimes climb into the machinery to remove the bags. So all the material recycling facilities in the state of Wisconsin are, they do not want recyclables collected in bags for that reason. Um, some articles that um, I know the New York Times article, there was an article in the Sheboygan Press, waste management starting to um, going to start fining and charging more for communities. They have a lot of contamination in these bags because it really slows down their process. Um, it's really neat going to see it. They use fiber optics uh, with the plastic with shooting rays of light and then they'll have um, uh, clearer plastic, have a shot of air, move it out it's for uh, multicolored plastic. They'll use weight for the cardboard to go up. And they'll uh, even using an artificial intelligence where it's scanning missed cans and metal and a suction going down and getting it out of the plastic. So it is a pretty <coughs> neat facility. They've invested a lot of money into the, the recycling and the removing of the paper and the plastic. So there are advantages to the carts, again, worker health, worker safety, cleaner collection, increased recycling. And one thing that we get a lot of phone calls and complaints from the citizens is the cost of buying the blue bags. Currently, I believe Walmart's the only um, retailer that's selling the blue bags, and they come in a pack of 400, which um, a lot of people are complaining because they don't need 400 at a time. So that is... Uh, it seems kind of trivial, trivial, but it is a complaint that we get quite a bit. So these are the gentlemen that are out every day um, picking up the garbage. According to the Center of Disease Controls, picking up garbage is one of the most dangerous uh, municipal jobs and one of the most dangerous jobs in uh, private industry. 
So in 2018, in the first 10 days, of, there were seven sanitation workers that were killed. The city of Racine had a sanitation worker killed in 2017. Working in the streets dangerous. The city of Milwaukee just lost an individual doing potholes, uh, which you have to be out of the truck to do that job. Moving to an automated, you're eliminating that person from being outside the truck. Sprains, strains, overexertion, injuries, um, all happen from getting on and off the truck and the awkward positions for bending over and picking up the trash and the garbage and the recycling. So last year we did have one individual stuck with a needle. We had an individual slip off a truck that cost $53,000 in workman's compensation. We are lucky on the slips in the ice and the lower back strains, but those could be um, more. Uh, lots of times there's broken glass in the bags that protrude, and when you're picking them up, they catch, mainly it's the guy's shins that get caught, um, and the forearms sometimes, so getting cut is also um, happens quite frequently. Keeps a cleaner collection. The lids keeps the materials contained. Uh, more room for recyclables. It's easier to roll the one bin out than make multiple trips with the bags. It protects against the birds and the rodents, and it improves the look of the neighborhoods. So this is current collection. So this is 25th Street in between um, Superior and Kohler Memorial Drive. I stopped. Um, so you look down the road, you can see all the garbage piled out. And then the seagulls, as you notice, when they start, he starts to pull it out, the cars pretty much don't even phase the wildlife anymore. They're not getting scared. So I tried to find some other communities that collect, this is an alley collection in the city of Milwaukee, similar to the collection that uh, two individuals were doing in the alley with the snow and the ice. So similar overhead wires, trees, there's all things that we'll have to deal with also in alleys. You notice the when the arm collects it pulls it back and when it tips it's very low it's it's it doesn't it's not like your front end uh, system was picking up a dumpster and raising it high over it it's nice and tight next to the side of the vehicle it's got a short reach and it dumps it right in so that's one of the advantages again is that, is that they've, they've designed these vehicles to actually pick up in these tight areas such as alleys first stop compared to the cart versus the guy having to get out and throw it in so the cycle time on the arm is between 15 and 20 seconds as you saw in the video our guys are really efficient um, but then you come across some really big ones where it's all spread out that may stop them um, which we would have to do is right now everything is based on um, tonnage so we'd have to reroute the stops based on the number the number of stops to get it around 900 stops. So some of the routes would change on the on the borders to equalize. Current for like for instance with with that is when we have a stop, we do it by by resident. But that resident will let's say it's a two family, it's all in one pile. Now you're going to have multiple carts at that one stop. So we have to make, balance it out. So depending upon if there's a lot of multifamily, it, they, it may have some of the routes change in those areas. Again, another street that I thought was representative to City of Sheboygan. This is an older part of Wauwatosa, narrow street. With the snow as well, yeah. they have the snow banks. But you... So 
So this driver is actually placing the carts back out of the public right away. This one he tries to get over onto the sidewalk, but he accidentally topples it. So this was a garbage and recycling week. He's just picking up, I believe, the yellow lids are, uh, I think that's recycling for Molotov, so. So carts use an automated system. So they typically increase recycling according to the Recycling Partnership of America between 10 and 30% from leaving bags and going to a cart-based system. So we had uh, hired Foth Analysis to help us with this. They came up with a couple different options for us. Option one is to maintain the current system. It's a 60-40 split, rear load, two-person crew, manually loading, garbage and uh, recycling would be collected weekly. The advantages, it's already in place. There's no transition to a new system. Citizens are already familiar with the process. It's the easiest option. Advantages, it's a less safe method of collecting solid waste and recyclables. Most prone collection method to creating litter. Least appealing aesthetically, requires two employees. Our current program is underperforming with the recycling. And the recycling bags is an added expense for residents. And as I stated earlier, the material recycling facilities are banning the bags. If we go out to RFP or bid to collect, um, to tip, excuse me, to tip, there's gonna be a surcharge on that. Those waste is gonna charge us more because there's gonna be more time involved with them ripping them off. And also I found out after the fact that um, other counties wanted to bid on our recycling last time that waste management uh, won the bid, but they did not due to the fact that our garbage is recyclable or our garbage is bagged and those counties that own their MRFs didn't want to bid on ours because they didn't want to deal with the bags. So it's going to limit who bids for our tipping on the recyclables. Option two would be a city owned trucks and carts, single compartment automated side loading trucks, one person fully automated with carts. Weekly collection for garbage, bi-weekly collection for recyclables. Um, we'd look to implement sometime in May or June of 2020. Advantages, again, most important to me is the worker health and safety. Uh, can reduce the worker's compensation costs. The convenience due to the standardized carts. It's cleaner collection, increase in recycling, less wildlife interference, reduce exposures to communal diseases for our employees and a residential satisfaction. Disadvantage, it is a higher truck capital and maintenance cost. Uh, the cart capital and maintenance cost of the carts, the storage of the carts. Um, and then we're gonna have to go through and look at the routing and make sure all the overhead obstacles and trees and the alleys and the, and the, and the narrow residential streets. So how would we implement it? We'd have four daily garbage routes and two daily recycling routes. So this is the question that I get the most. So the four garbage trucks, we'll just say route one, two, and three, and four would go out. And then on one week, routes one and two would get their recycling picked up. The next week's route three and four would get the recycling picked up. Um, a lot of the municipalities, they call it an A week and a B week, and you, uh, you work with your GIS where you type in your address and it tells you what day is your collection and whether you're an A week and a B week, and then you go to a map and it shows which weeks that are collected. Um, we would need to part, purchase seven trucks. That would be one automated truck. The six would be being da uh, used daily with a budget cost of around $2 million.
Thank you, Chairman. Are we going to get into how we're going to finance both the uh, garbage trucks and the carts later? Yeah. Very good. Thank you. And the carts are going to cost just as much or a little bit more than the actual trucks. Uh, between $55 and $57 a cart will need about 37,000 um, carts. So we have been demoing and looking at trucks. We um, had a manufacturer come in, spend some time with our workers. Um, so the seven trucks we're looking at is a new way, is the brand name. Uh, looking to pay for it out of the motor vehicle fund. It's part of the strategic plan focus area, include the quality of life we feel um, for public facilities and neighborhood revitalization. So I know a lot of you don't have the privilege of being around recycle garbage trucks like I do. So we took a video, um, took a walk around it. They're only uh, this clean and pretty once. <laughs> they are a little bigger than our current trucks. So the manufacturer came, all of our uh, employees got to get inside, practice with the arm, ask questions. Um, and then because I thought people would be interested, I put the camera actually on, on the cart. So I'm watching it on my phone. That's why I'm looking at my phone there. I'm watching the live feed of the video. The cart goes in to the hopper, and then there's a blade that will push, push that um, material into the back. Correct. So if there, uh, thank you, John. Yeah. So John was in the in the sorry, John was in the truck with the manufacturers, seeing how it works. So if there is a large amount of contamination, we can note it so that we know that the, the lead man or I or supervisor can come back and put a oops tag, they call it, you, you made a mistake. And then if it continues, then we can um, work within the ordinances to uh, not pick it up and cite, cite the individual. So the garbage and recycling carts, the cost of the carts would be included in the 2020 capital improvement. Um, designated in the capital fund. So 37,000 carts, like I said, they range between 51 and $55. I've been working with the, the Recycling Partnership of America. Right now they have a grant for up to $7 per recycling cart. I asked if they'd give me a grant for the garbage carts. They, they said no. <laughs> um, and then we would, um, there's some other things we'd be eligible for. They have a coastal grant being on the Great Lakes. So I'd be able to apply for um, additional funds for education and uh, recycling uh, containers for public facilities. So there's 64 gallon and 96 gallon carts. They have a similar footprint. We've got uh, 95, 96 gallon and then a, a 64-gallon. Talking with cart manufacturers and the Recycling Partnership, they recommend everybody starts out with a 95-gallon cart and to try it out and see how it works. And then if you need to, then you substitute with the 65-gallon. The reason for that is, is people automatically think they want the 65-gallon and you end up like the city of West Des Moines who has a 1,000 64 gallon carts that are 15 years old sitting in the public works yard because uh, everyone ordered them, they got them, decided they wanted the bigger one, and then they swapped out. The majority of the people, I believe, are going to want a 95 gallon. So if you give everyone a 95 gallon and you substitute out with the 64, at least the 95 one would be a stock and would be able to be um, go out if there is um, damage. The manufacturer we're looking at is the only one that has a 12-year uh, warranty on the body, 10 years on the lids and the wheels. I'd recommend that you buy the same color body and then you buy different color lids for garbage and recycling. 
That way you don't have to stock two different colors of bodies, just stock two different colors of lid. Someone's garbage lid breaks, then you bring them a garbage lid. You know, if their body breaks, then you just have one body and you don't have to have a, a black body or a green body or, or whatever colors that, that we decide. Um, this is Toter that we're looking at with their manufacturing, their rotary mold. So they're, they were a Rubbermaid company. So there's Rubbermaid tubs and then Sterilite, which is the harder plastic. This would be like a Rubbermaid tub. The other major manufacturer is a little more brittle. Um, it's like the Sterilite tub. They have a 10-year warranty. Because of the manufacturing process with this, this is the, one of the carts where you can use recyclable material and it doesn't necessarily affect the, um, the quality or the warranty. So it's a 12-year um, warranty on the body, whether it's 50% recycling down to no recycling, where some of the other manufacturers, you get in the higher recycling content and then the, the quality isn't there in the warranty. So as we talked earlier, basically our routes are broken down by structures. There's 15,000, I'm having a hard time reading, 50, about 15,000 structures in the city, but 18,397 residents. And that's due to the single family versus uh, duplex, uh, three family and a four family. So we would have to change our routes because of the time it takes for the arm to go in and out to route them based on um, household versus structure. We've already identified about 387 stops. It would be a challenge for the new trucks. Um, a lot of it's doing the backing them down an alley with one individual and then collecting one side and then pulling out, then pulling in and then backing out onto oncoming traffic. Um, there's probably going to be a few more stops that we're going to add to this. Uh, but the vast majority of them are going to be able to be picked up from the curbside or from the alley with the automated arm. So we have a couple of different ways that we can um, address these problem areas. One is called semi-automated collection, and that's where you put a flipper on the back, and the worker does move the cart to the back, flips the garbage in, and then uh, puts the cart off to the side and moves on. The other way we could do it is... Two individuals could take the spare truck out so you have a spotter or they park the truck and they move all the cans to it and dump them in in some of those tight areas. Long term, parks is collected manually. We have a smaller park truck. I think when that park truck is at the end of its life, we look at buying a smaller automated truck that can get into those alleys and do a, a three-point turn and go up and down. And then that truck would be used for the it's probably going to be, it's 380 stops now, I'd say probably 500 weekly stops. Um, and then that truck would be used for picking up park garbage and for some of these challenging spots um, when that truck, when that park truck's at the end of its useful life. So I, I admit that there are some areas that are going to be challenging, but I think we'll be able to handle it. Uh, with 18,000 stops, three to 500 isn't a large amount to deal with on a weekly basis. Option three would be to contract, um, and then it would be pretty much similar to the option two, uh, one person. Uh, talking with the consultants, they recommend that the city still purchase the carts. And the reason for that is, is if you change vendors and they own the carts, then you're going to have to manage them picking up their carts and with the new contractor delivering the new carts, where we own the carts, we own that process, and we have a little bit more control over it. Some of the risks of private. Um, after the first five-year term, lots of times you're seeing the competitive pricing goes up quite a bit. Uh, when the cities get rid of their, their employees and the equipment, it's hard for them to get back into it. Um, you also go from a service, managing a service, to overseeing a contract. So today, our garbage men tagged a resident. She had paint out, and it wasn't done properly. The garbage men tagged it, 
form, left it there in the lead bin, gets involved, he goes, explains what she did wrong, and he ends up taking it and actually went into her basement and took like six bags of the paint, which normally we don't do. And I can tell you a contractor isn't going to go that far and do that. Lots of times we get the calls, you know, we'll put a helper truck out in clement weather or we have mandatory safety meetings. So instead of the four trucks, we'll put a helper truck out and that truck will get 25% of all the other routes. So your garbage is normally, your garbage guy is usually there at 11 o'clock every day. So you don't put your garbage out to 1030. There's a helper truck and your garbage man comes by at nine o'clock. We get the phone call. He didn't pick mine up. We, we missed it. We all know that we didn't not pick the one up, but we go back to make you guys look good. And we go back and we pick it up. And that's the kind of service you do get with the city provided garbage collection. Kohler is the most recent contract that went out in our area. They came back at $11 and 70 cents uh, for garbage and recycling. So that that's guaranteed for the first one to two years. And then it will go up in years three to five uh, with the CPI. And then they have surcharges for fuel and other things that can add to cost of collection. So we had option one, which was keep going. Option two would be for us to continue or to, to get into the automated side loading collection with carts and bins. And option three would be to contract it out. So the Foth analysis, which is hard to read in here, uh, was about $9.08 to continue going on, $9.43 for us to go in with biweekly collection for the recycling and weekly collection for the garbage. And then option three, um, $10.41 was based on 2018 data, talking with a local hauler. Um, it wasn't a bid or it wasn't, um, a con wasn't a competitive bid prices. So they basically came out down to $6 um, per household to pick up and then adding the cart cost onto it. And that's how they got to the $10.41. So, yep. Chairman, uh, Jason, uh, something that you and I talked about, just so uh, we understand, is that this bid for the contractor included picking up the recycling every week where we're proposing picking right. it up every, every other week. So there might be a slight difference in the 1041 right. Because there, of the added service. There could be. Uh, you look at the Kohler one, which is the most recent, and that's at $11. Talking with the consultants, he doesn't think the $6, they could do it any lower than that. And like I said earlier, a lot of these manufacturers, or excuse me, they're not manufacturers, hauling will come in at a low price, and then after you're in is when the price is increased dramatically. Um, right now, waste is our tipping. They do a lot of commercial pickup. They do not do a lot of residential pickup in the city. Uh, advanced is the main one, and they're pretty much the only player. When you get into Harders, is in the western part of the state. Um, Johns is more southeastern Wisconsin, and um, Waste Republic and has not moved up into this area very much either. So we're pretty much going to be relying on one one hauler in the Sheboygan area. So if we went forth, we'd purchase the trucks. We'll roll out an implementation plan in 2019. In January of 2020, we would purchase the carts. Um, and then we would start in May. I did talk with actually waste management. They did recommend that you start in June and not May. They said it's Sometimes when you start in between Memorial Day and the, or excuse me, July is when they recommend the first uh, full month without a holiday. I'm screwing that up, I'm sorry. June 1st, they said wait till after Memorial Day so you have a full month of June before the 4th of July holiday. 
So lots of times if you start in early May and then you have a holiday, people are learning the new schedule and everything gets shifted by a day. So uh, the trucks do take about nine to 10 months. So that's why we'd buy the trucks this year. The carts take six to eight week lead time. So you'd be able to purchase the carts in January of 2020 and have them here in enough time. So the option costing again. So funding for the garbage and the recycling carts, we can borrow at about a 3% 10 year. It's $171,000 in um, finance charges. No upfront cost to the citizens. You pay it back over 10 years. Disadvantages, it impacts the bond rating. A tax increase for all the citizens not participating in the service, such as small businesses and um, apartment complexes, uh, more than four units. And it will limit other projects by um, limiting the money available for other public works projects. Recycling fee option, a $4 a month recycling fee to citizens would come out to about $883,000 annually. A minimal cost, it doesn't add to the borrowing debt, it doesn't impact the bond rating, it increases the city operation capacity. The dis disadvantage, additional monthly fee and a two and a half year payback. So the Wisconsin Journal, Sentinel, went through and listed uh, a lot of the southeastern Wisconsin garbage and recycling fees. Um, if you combine the $5 fee with the $4 fee, we'd come out to $108. We'd be on the lower end of the monthly fees. We also look at all those fees and as the numbers go up, there's not any more um, public service. It's all private as those fees go up. The average was 170 when you averaged out all those communities of uh, annual fee for garbage and recycling. So the department, um, the um, city puts out a survey too, I forgot to mention, asking for feedback from the citizens. In the last two years, there's been quite a few uh, responses from the citizens asking for carts. So both the citizens and department public works believe that Sheboygan should move away from manual collection and move to a cart based system. The department recommends implementing the $4 monthly household fee. I guess, yeah, questions or? Chairman, uh, Daryl, I had some discussions with you a few days ago about your funding options for both the carts and the trucks, and I believe you told me you were looking into a lease program on the carts along with the grant funds that Jason talked about. Have you got any more information on that? And you were saying something about we would get a more favorable uh, rate because, because of being a municipality? Uh, yes, uh, what you've identified is, is correct. Uh, I think Jason alluded to the fact that the capital, capitalized costs associated with the trucks, uh, because the city anticipated this discussion point, um, I think five of the trucks are included in the 2019 budget. Uh, we would look toward the fund balance within the motor vehicle fund for the remaining number of trucks. Again, seven, uh, which includes one spare. For the carts themselves, uh, uh, worked with finance director Halverson, worked with uh, Mr. Beeble and others, looking uh, what other funds uh, within the city uh, we could tap as, as an advance to pay for the capital costs associated with the carts. The concern, of course, is that as we uh, go through our, our 2019 and 2020 borrowing, um, even though we have uh, uh, additional funds available in our general fund and even our debt service fund. Both of those funds are looked at by Moody's uh, when the city goes out for our borrowing. So if we were to take a sizable amount in addition to the 
large amount uh, that was transferred in 2018 for the city hall project my concern is that could ne harm or negatively affect our, our very good credit rating um, so Jason uh, did mention to the cart manufacturer that we were looking at all options to underwrite the cost the capital cost of the carts um, the companies uh, that manufacture carts do work with lease leasing or invest investment companies and was able to get a couple different proposals as you alluded to because we're a public entity they're able to take advantage that it is a public uh, intended use uh, the manufacturer and ultimate use of the carts and so we're able to take advantage with roughly an eight with roughly a four percent interest rate uh, if we're looking at a lease period of, of 10 years so 10 years and then we would purchase the carts for a dollar or 50 cents some, something nominal uh, so the the calculations uh, that uh, Jason uh, put together and presented to the Public Works Committee the interest rate is a little bit higher I think he had three percent versus four percent that he was using on his calculations but the four dollars um, would be close to covering the actual cost uh, the advantage of going the leasing route um, is that uh, we would not have to report that as debt uh, to Moody's uh, so it would not appear as it's as if it's an additional two million dollars of outstanding debt uh, so again every little bit helps uh, as 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 it pertains to trying to retain our, our again very favorable credit rating just to follow up if I may and then on the on the garbage trucks uh, the uh, the plan for that is to take that out of the uh, take the majority of that out of the motor vehicle fund is that correct yes as part of the uh, analysis performed by city staff uh, we asked them to go through the process of looking at uh, like a five-year projection so uh, again tapping uh, the fund balance within the motor vehicle fund also looking at possibly reducing the amount of of help that fund receives uh, in the last I think three or four years it's been roughly a million dollars that you've allowed uh, a million dollars of annual new issue debt to help uh, pay for some of the more significant needs and priorities that uh, public works have placed on those vehicles but starting as early as next year reduce it to as low as a quarter of a million dollars uh, again mr. Beeble and his staff looked at those projections uh, including uh, an increase in the charges for services to the different departments uh, I may get this wrong I think it's been 15 years since there's been a, a increase in the actual charges again this includes staffing cost so the hope is to sort of right size that budget reduce the overall debt uh, that we incur and in essence transfer this fund but we think w even with the use of fund balance for the remaining purchase of the necessary vehicles for this uh, project uh, it would be a sustainable financial plan for the motor vehicles fund so we currently have about uh, roughly the two million dollars in the motor vehicle fund uh, for 2019 uh, roughly 1.1 million 1.2 excuse me 1.2 million is already slated uh, to be included as borrowed funds we will receive some uh, revenues from trading in our existing trucks roughly 150 70, to 275 yep. uh, so that that will help uh, and again the remaining we would tap that fund balance for the remaining capitalized costs of these seven new trucks so in your opinion Daryl you're happy with the financing that uh, structure we've come up with for both the carts and the trucks yes I am thank you Todd. thank you chair <clears throat> I apologize for my voice so I'll try to keep it real short but we know better um, I, I want to compliment everybody on on a really good job uh, Public Works has been working on this for for quite a few years um, again we did bring in the fourth group and did a study which gave uh, public works a lot of direction and and gave us a lot of information there's only certain projects that come to the to to a city and municipality that um, touch everybody in some way shape or form and this is one of them 
I know as, a, as a, an alder for many years <clears throat> that uh, this is one of them that have, has had a, a positive um, effect that our constituents continue to ask, when is this going to get implemented and when are we going to do it? So I agree as it was discussed in the very beginning, even though there is a cost, the benefits definitely outweigh um, what that's going to be, and it's going to be a learning curve. I think the Public Works has done a great job um, also working with, uh, with Daryl and his team on financing options, looking at leasing versus purchasing versus um, outsourcing. And doing what we're doing today is, not, in my opinion, not an option. Uh, we've, we've had the best of all, um, all, all areas. We have such a great team uh, that, that make it very difficult for us to look at some of the new changes. But as far as safety and quality and, and moving forward, we really need to get to an automated pr um, process. So in my opinion, I, I recommend this, and I think that uh, the city needs to move forward on this, um, and the sooner the better. Thank you. Ron. I also, my two years on the council, have heard nothing but complaints about our current garbage pickup situation, and I'm looking forward to this type of a system, which certainly is necessary. The seagulls do get out to the far west side of town, too, <laughs> and we, we see them every Tuesday <laughs> when, they, when they arrive. There are um, a number of issues. Uh, concerning placement of carts, concerning lost carts, and how do we charge people for them, and those kinds of things. I'm assuming that Public Works will continue to work on those issues if we do decide to go to go forward, or if you've already done some planning on some of those things. Yeah, yes, and, and, and we have a full implementation plan as part of probably the next big initiative that we're going to be working on once once we get a decision on if this is the direction we want to head that's going to be what we're going to be working on is an information education program as alderman wolf mentioned this affects everyone in the community so we really need to get the message right and we need to get that out to everybody so we're going to be looking at multiple different ways neighborhood meetings uh, with the, the neighborhood associations, outreaching with some of the, the, the rental properties and, and the landlord associations, as well as just the residents themselves, and giving that type of information, where to place the car, what day you're going to do it, and so forth. So, yeah, that, that will be a, 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 big, a big program that will be forthcoming. Anyone have any other questions for Public Works? Mary Lynn? Um, just a question. Uh, are we saving any labor costs? Well, obviously not half, but there, there, there is some labor costs that is saving. So we, we're going from eight operators to six operators. And what the proposal is, is that we would reduce the staff through attrition or through retirements. And looking at our, our budgets by, by 2020, we, we anticipate to have those openings available and just would not be backfilled with, with additional personnel. So. Anyone else? Jim? Chairman, uh, I know I'm, I'm anticipating phone calls from my constituents when this program is rolled out in the uh, Sheboygan Press. And I guess the question I, uh, that I'm going to get is, we already have the $5 garbage fee per month. Why are you going to be charging me another $4 a month? How would you suggest I answer that? I, I think we'll, we'll be developing a, like a position paper on that definitely and get get all that type of information. But one of the one of the, the of the fee is that now we have the carts. That's an added cost, so we have to pay for it one way. So one way was well, we could just send you a bill for the cart, uh, that which you know it's going to be about a hundred dollars per resident, or. And, and that doesn't even include like we're talking some of the capital costs of the truck replacement and so forth. So the, the fee structure kind of what it does is it kind of also mirrors what we're doing for motor vehicles that we're, it's starting to become like an enterprise fund where the direct cost of the program will be attributable to the program. So the $4 fee will go for the recycling carts as well as the two recycling trucks and will be tracked in the budget as such. And then if I could just follow up on that, uh, the $4 fee, 
Uh, how long do you anticipate it? It'll be $4. Is it going to go down? Is it going to go up? And what's going to be the contributing factor to maybe going up or down? We, we're, we have a contract that's due for our transfer and tipping that ends this year. So that will be a five-year contract again. So depending upon that contract, and we're anticipating probably right as of today, recycling is free to the city. So in other words, a ton of recyclables costs zero dollars. The trend in the industry is there's now going to be a fee for recyclables, uh, partly because of the contamination issue as well as now with the markets in China not buying much of the recyclable material. The markets just aren't there. So based on that contract, the, the opportunity would be is when that five years expires and we go out for a re-up or another contract or RFP, and if those costs would raise significantly, then I would, that would mirror probably the, the opportunity then with the recycling or garbage fee. We'd have to look at it and say, okay, these are what the bids are. We may have to increase that at that point. Thanks. All right, anyone else? Mary Lynn? Um, I do intend to support uh, all three of the resolutions, um, and I won't be talking, but I, I, there are just a couple of things that I wanted to mention. One of the things that finally did sell me on this is the fact that our residents don't have to purchase the carts outright. Um, I think the recycle fee is its just one of those. If you get a little tiny bit every month, it's not as hard as you know sending in your what the IRS wants from you for your taxes and that sort of thing. Um, I loved the videos of the guys picking up the garbage. Dancers, they're like dancers. It was poetic. It was great. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I was as riveted this time as I was the first time I watched the video. And so, um, and I do appreciate um, uh, their strength and agility and uh, hard work. Um, so I, that's all good. Um, I do know that there are seagulls around and they peck bags apart. Um, as I drive around, though, there are many, 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 many more bags that are not pecked apart by seagulls. Uh, that being said, I still think there's a compelling reason to use the carts. Here's my, <laughs> here's my issue and observation. Um, uh, Tim and I spend a little time in Milwaukee from time to time that has the carts and it's in an old neighborhood with narrow, narrow sidewalks, and you don't walk. You pick your way around the carts that will stay out for a day, or two days, or three days, or they, there's some that just seem to always be there. I represent a constituents in the old part of the city where there aren't garages. Tim and I will actually have to build another garage <laughs> to fit these two honkers in, I'm, or I'm going to have to start par parking my car. You know, we have a modest garage. You know, we don't have a three-car garage and a big driveway. We just don't. We're on an alley. I have no idea where we're going to put these suckers. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's really it's going to be interesting. So. Um, but people need to understand that, yes, it's not nice to see pecked apart garbage bags, it's also really not nice to see these unsightly carts out all day. If you're lucky, it's just all day. And if you're not lucky, it's... And we're going to have in my district houses where people don't have a place to put them. We do have a garage, and I can park my car on the street. But there are lots and lots of people in my district that don't have garages. And they, you know, it's, it's just... They don't have driveways, you know, they're just old apartments or old houses that before we did those kinds of things. So I do appreciate the fact that we're doing the media presentation. Um, I, I think we're tra trading one inconvenience for another. Uh, and I expect to get a, a fair number of phone calls. But the other thing is people get used to stuff. You know, you just get used to it. So to me, it is not, it's not a decisional factor that they look ugly and they're going to be on the sidewalk and we're not going to be able to walk around like we used to um, because people will get used to it and will enforce things and so forth. So I just, and I only say all of this in this long speech is to say this is no panacea. This is no wonderful way that we are improving our community. I think we're being smarter. 
I think worker safety is very important. Um, but I think we're all going to be getting quite a few phone calls. And it's going to start to make the pecked apart bags look not so bad after all. So, um, so we'll see. No, we'll I, see. I, I understand that the first couple months is there's going to be some heartburn with it, and it's going to be a learning curve. But it is the industry standard, it, and it's the way most, most of the state has gone. So. Todd. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Jason, how many how many garbage bags can fit in a 96 uh, gallon container? I took I brought them over my pickup truck, but I took them out. But I bought um, packing peanuts, which are pretty light and fluffy, and I was getting six sitting on top of each other, just like that for a volume. But you can get six, seven cart uh, bags into them. And the reason I bring that up is even when you watch the video. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but the, um, the majority of the homes would have four, five, six, or eight bags, and respectfully. And very little recycling. You right. Notice. So the concept so. is obviously we want, we want our, our constituents to recycle more, which helps us with our cost. It also helps them to put more materials into the second container, which is also cheaper for us, theoretically. And then it means that the five or six bags of of refuge would fit into the one container versus piled up on the inside a garage or on the side of a house. Correct. Thank you. Dean. Yes. One comment that I'd like to make is that, you know, first of all, I'd like to thank Jason and David for their, their efforts in this. They, they've really done a, a good job. Um, I think, uh, this is just this is the beginning this is just the start we, we we're going to have some more work dave and jason are going to have more work and they know that and uh, i think that their leadership will uh, uh bring us through on this and i think you know we're, we're going to have to make there's going to be some uh ordinance changes that are going to probably have to go along with this and uh, uh but i but i think this is this is the way to go i mean even if we didn't even if we went tried to go with the bag system we would have to do something different with our recyclables anyways there's no way we could stay with the, from what everything we've been indicated there's no way we could stay with the current bag system with our recyclables so we would end up with a cart for just our recyclables well now we're halfway there already anyways why don't we complete the job and i guess that's all my comments any other questions for the folks at public works all right, seeing none, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we'll jump into um, item 3.1, RO number 238-1819, uh, by the city clerk submitting a communication from older person boarding, born regarding publishing in the New York Times dated March 16th, 2019, with the headline, as cost rockets, more cities stop recycling. I'll turn it over to older person Boren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I hope you've had a chance to read the article uh, I'm just going to read a couple things just to give you the flavor. Uh, and as, as the chairman mentioned, the article is as costs skyrocket, more U.S. cities stop recycling. Uh, with China no longer accepting used plastic and paper, communities are facing steep collection bills, forcing them to end their programs or burn or bury more waste. Uh, recycling for decades, uh, an almost reflective effort by American households and businesses to reduce waste and help the environment is collapsing in many parts of the country. Philadelphia is now burning about half of its 1.5 million residents recycling material in an incinerator that converts it to uh, energy. And then there was uh, another community down in Florida, central Florida, uh, Deltona faced with the reality that despite their best efforts to recycle, their curbside program was not working and suspended it. Uh, I guess my question, David, and this article, this article was in the, the New York Times. The one yesterday was in the Sheboygan Press, and a few days earlier it was in the Milwaukee Journal. Uh, one of the mayors was quoted as saying uh, that uh, one of the mayors was quoted as saying, "Recycling is a luxury that we no longer can afford." And I guess what worries me a little bit, uh, David and Jason, is this renewal of this contract that's coming up. Can you just give us a flavor of how everything that's going on in the worldwide recycling market is going to affect us over the next three, four, five years? It's definitely changing in, in its market rate. It's market-based. 
So right now there's really not a, a lot of market for it. So what the companies have done is they're, they're stockpiling it. And unfortunately, they're running out of room to stockpile it until the market gets better. We're always going to have some form of recycling. The industry has invested literally billions of dollars to manage recyclable materials. So it's just not like they're going to turn a switch off and say, oh, we're out of the business. Will it be more costly for us? Yes, but it won't be as costly as garbage. So it still should be a savings. However, as it, it won't be as great as a savings as we've been used to. As I mentioned earlier, right as of today, we're paying zero dollars per ton for our recyclables. If it goes up to $15 or even $20, it's still less expensive than the $47 a ton for garbage. So it, it, it is a cost. We know there's going to be challenges with it, but I still think that we're going to be recycling in, in, in this country one way or the other. There, it, there, is a, there, are, there are some materials where, such as aluminum, that there is a direct advantage to recycling aluminum because it is much cheaper to recycle aluminum versus virgin material. Other materials, however, that's not the case. And so some division, decisions will be made on a longer term basis on does it make sense to recycle some of this material or not. So that will be the key. And there's, and there's a lot of legislation in place right now that would need to be changed in order just to start banning materials or getting out of recycling completely. And then if that would be the case, I think then you'd have the industries and the lobbyists coming at them saying, hey, we, we just invested billions of dollars on the premise that this is the law, this has to be managed in a certain way and now you're changing it. So I think it's not, it's, it's not a matter of you know, a snapshot in time as today. It, it, it's gonna take, as it, as it took to, to get recycling in place to where it is today, it took us about 25 years, it's not gonna go away that quickly. It's gonna take some time if it would be changed and go away over time. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I had a conversation with Jason and um, you know, I read some articles about many of uh, the communities are going back to dual stream recycling so that the products that end up being recycled are more virgin and, and, and cleaner. And uh, Jason went and checked with some of the companies in the area and he said, Mike, they're not gonna make that change to, to that for the foreseeable future. They've invested so much in the dual stream recycling MRFs, the material re recovery facilities, that that's not gonna happen for a long time. But he also said that if they do do that, then all we have to do is put on a, another recycling uh, two trucks and we can go and we can pick up recycling twice. Uh, you know, one time it would be for the paper and cardboard, and the next time it would be for the, the cans and bottles. So we, we can't adapt to that if that's the way they go in the future, but it's not something he feels we're gonna see in, in the near future at all. Any other discussion on this item? Seeing none, I believe the correct motion would be to file. Is there such motion? There's, there's been a motion and a second. Any more discussion on 3.1? Seeing none, all those in favor of filing this, please state aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, jumping into 3.2, RC number 284-1819 by the Public Works Committee, to whom referred was uh, resolution number 192-1819 by Elderpersons Wolf and Sorensen, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Sun Graphics Media for the creation of materials for public education and outreach related to the automated garbage and recycling program. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Chair. I, I'd first like to make a motion to approve, but then I'd like uh, Mr. Beeble to kind of explain a little bit about this portion of it. All right, there's been a motion. Is there a second? second. There's been a motion and a second. Um, David? Sure. What, what, what this portion would be is we'd work with Sun Graphics to develop our information education uh, program that we are anticipating with this pro process. As we all mentioned earlier, this is going to impact everybody in the community. So we want to make sure we get that information out correctly, get the right message to the right, the right, the right audience as well. So it's going to be a little bit tailored for each audience. You know, we, like I mentioned, we have the renter, the rental units, the, the audiences with the landlords versus the neighborhood associations, 
and so forth. So that's part of the process that we're, we're looking to go over with this. Again, it's a work in progress. We, we, we have some material from FOTH as well. Now it's a matter of packaging that and putting it together in a com comprehensive program so we can get that message out. Marcus. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. I'd first like to say that I am 100% in favor of the garbage collection uh, proposal to move to automated trucks, as well as the uh, great work that Sun Graphics does. However, in committee, it came to my attention that Sun Graphics was given this, or was proposed to get this contract without competitive bidding. And that's just unacceptable. We are here to be good stewards of the public's tax, tax dollars. And this is a very rare occasion when I feel, where I feel that we're not being those good stewards. While Sun Graphics might be the right company, they're probably uh, going to do a great job for us. Without getting competitive bids, I think we may be overpaying. And with that, I cannot vote in favor of this without a competitive bid. Thank you. Mr. Beeble? On that, on that subject, typically for professional services, our department does not go out for competitive bids. Uh, when we go out for such as, I'll use engineering companies as well, we'll negotiate and get proposals based upon uh, a, a standard hours of work or a scope of work, look at deliverables. So on professional service contracts, we typically don't go out for bids. Now construction projects, yes we do, or for, for purchases of equipment for an example. Um, I understand completely it, it, that it's sole sourced, uh, the, from a department's perspective, we just had a relationship with Sun Graphics on, on some other projects. We, they worked with the county, for instance, on, on, on some of the, the bike and rec, as well as their stormwater management. So that's partly why we reached out to them. Uh, we looked at their hourly rates and some of the professional services that they provide. We felt it was part of the industry standard. So, but I do, do understand your concern and we're, we're cognizant of price as well, and we don't want to be overpaying for this material as well. And we, we felt that, at least for what was proposed, was within that, that, that framework. Jim. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just a technicality, uh, isn't this Sun, Sun Graphics thing on the agenda tomorrow night for Public Works? That, that's for a budget transfer. For the transfer but that that um, we actually have money within the garbage and recycling account that we're we're going to probably f the recommendation tomorrow night is just to file that and uh, because the money won't have to be transferred it's within the it's within our garbage and recycling as we are today okay thank you okay any more discussion on this item seeing none uh, there's been a motion in a second um, all those in favor of a Approving this and sending it to the council for a recommendation of approval. Please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Nay. Uh, chair votes aye. Um, that one's approved. Okay, moving along. 3.3 RC number uh, 289 1819 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred by resolution number 190 1819 by Alder Persons Wolf and Sorensen expressing. The sense of the council that tra uh, transitioning to an automated garbage and recycling collection program is the best interest in the city. So, second. There's been a motion to approve and a second. Any more discussion on this one? All right, seeing none, all those in favor of approving this uh, with a recommendation to the council, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you. Moving along. 3.4, RC number 290-1819 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred by resolution number 191, 1819 by Elder Person Sorensen and Wolf, authorizing the Department of Public Works to purchase seven new uh, way auto carts, automated garbage and recycling collection trucks. There's been a motion and a second by Elder Person Boren. Any discussion on this item? All right, seeing no more discussion, all those in favor of approving this resolution, uh, please state aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. All right, seeing that we have agenda the, uh, uh, exhausted the agenda, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? There's been a motion and a second to adjourn. Um, all those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Uh, we are adjourned at 7.15. Uh, Thank you everyone for coming tonight. Thank you.